going to be in attendance today? You know, I haven't, I didn't hear from anybody that said that they wouldn't be attending. Um, once, once I can get back to my screen. Right. You tell me when you're ready to go. Let me just, sure. looks like Mrs. Amber one? is coming yeah. on right now. So we are live. Um, I'm just going to start recording. And then if we have more members that join us, I'll just let them in as they. Um, okay. Thank you. It is five o'clock. Um, this is a specially called uh, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals in Jamestown. Um, today is uh, February 24th. Uh, we require four members to be present to make a quorum out of our seven members. Um, and just as a matter of courtesy to allow us to know who is in attendance, I am going to have Jennifer call the roll of the board members. Okay. Ms. Kame? Mrs. Jones? Here. Mr. Kenyon? Here. Mr. Panabianco? Here. Mr. Smeal? Mr. Soar? Here. And Chairwoman DeTonto? Here. Uh, we do have more than a quorum in attendance, and it is possible that we will have the other two members who did not uh, answer that they're here yet come in uh, prior to uh, the votes. Uh, we have one petition uh, that was tabled at our meeting, uh, our regular meeting on February 3rd. Uh, it does require us to take it off of the table in order for us to discuss it. So at this point, I would be looking for someone from the board uh, to make a motion to remove that from the table. I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Panabianco. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you very much, Mr. Smeal. And please note that Mr. Smeal is here. Uh, again, we're at six of seven members. Thank you. Um, there is a motion on the floor now to remove the petition of Jacqueline Ferraro and Vicki Haskell uh, for a use variance. Uh, at the property at 379 Buffalo Street. Um, at this point, are there questions on the motion? Seeing none, I would ask you, uh, Jennifer, to call the roll. Uh, before I do that, can I, I just admitted someone on the phone. I'm wondering, is that is that you, Stephanie? Hi, Jennifer, yes it is. I, I'm still trying to get my uh, uh, the video off portion up. Okay, perfect. But I am so we'll, looking at perfect, all right, we'll just note for the record that you're here. Um, so Thank on, the, you. on the motion to remove the petition from the table, we'll start with Ms. Kame. And, and this is to remove, this is to, this is to vote or this is to re remove the, I'm sorry, I just joined. No, nope, that's okay. This is just to remove the petition from the table so that it can be discussed and then voted on. Okay, got it. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Kenyon? Yes. Mr. Panabianco? Yes. Mr. Smeal? Yes. Mr. Sorg? Yes. And Chairwoman DeTonto? Yes. Okay. At this point, I will ask uh, the clerk to read the petition again, and we will again allow the petitioner or representatives to speak to the motion. Every time they are asked to speak, they must identify themselves by name and home address in order for us to be able to get that into the record. Uh, so Jennifer, if you would read the petition. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Jamestown, New York will hold a special public hearing on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021 at 5 o'clock p.m. via Zoom to consider the following. The petition of Jacqueline Ferraro and Vicki Haskell, 306 Howard Avenue, Jamestown, New York, 14701, for a use variance to operate a dance studio in the former Grace Chapel located on parcel 370.16-6-57 located at 379 Buffalo Street, Jamestown, New York in an R1 zone. Section 300-0305, the use of the building as a dance studio is not a permitted use within the R1 district. The first permitted district is the RC multiple family residential and professional office district. This petition was tabled at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals that was held on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021 at five o'clock p.m. And this notice was published on February 10th. Thank you, Jennifer. And at this point, I see we do have Jacqueline Ferraro, the petitioner, and also I believe her attorney is with us, Mr. Uber. Either one can uh, make some comments about this, but again, please state your name and your home address uh, before you do speak. Thank you, Mr. Tonto. 
Uh, my name is Shane Huber. I'm attorney for uh, Jack McFarrow and Vicki Casper regarding their application of, of the use variance. Uh, for the record, my office address is 314 Cherry Street, Jamestown, New York, 14701. Um, I submitted to um, the board my, my client's amended application for the use variance as well as my brief in support of the relief requested. Um, it's pretty lengthy, so I'm going to really hit the, the main points, uh, summarizing all the four categories that need to be satisfied for this board to issue a use variance. Um, you know, as the board stated, this is an R1 district, okay? As shown in um, my papers submitted to the board, you know, when we're looking at the uh, reasonable return on investment, the documents that we submitted are dollars and cents proof that in the event that you know the, we had to convert this property or use it for a permissive use, uh, the return on investment would just uh, wouldn't be there. Okay, as when it comes to the single family dwellings, okay, I submitted to this board the quotes of what it would actually cost to convert this property to a single family dwelling. As you see, um, you know we're looking at 150,000. The uh, quote that I did submit. We also got others to go along with it, which were in the same ballpark. Um, take that into consideration with the current demographic of the neighborhood and the actual values the properties are assessed at by the city tax assessor. Um, you're gonna invest you know, $200,000 where the average property is valued at about 30, okay? Also, in addition, when we're looking at other uses of it regarding churches, I've submitted to the board the uh, market analysis as prepared by Sandy Calcino of Century 21, um, as well as her affirmation regarding, you know, what prop, uh, what has actually happened at this property since it was first listed. Uh, you know, these church properties are very difficult to sell. Then you add on a pandemic on top of it where membership is down, contributions are down, and the ability to go and relocate, whether it's a church or another religious organization, just isn't possible right now. Um, as you saw on the market analysis, you know, how long these properties remain on the market. You know, for example, the one on Hall Avenue uh, over by the Armory, which is the similarly situated in R1 district, is on the market for, gosh, 300 or 464 days before it sold after being taken off the market numerous times. Okay. Um, Regarding the other permissive uses allowed, the, the way that this lot is situated uh, would not be uh, essentially conducive to, you know, whether it's an educational facility, uh, any type of you know, outdoor uh, education and things like that. Uh, so there is the dollars and cents proof submitted to this board showing that uh, the return on investment just is not there based upon one, the, the values of the properties in the neighborhood, as well as what it would cost to potentially make this property a single family home, okay? Um, in regards to the other, okay, uh, elements that were submitted, okay? When we were looking at hardship, whether it was self-created, uh, as shown in my papers, this uh, property has been a uh, permissive uh, use of a church since about 1951. Um, the return on investment when we're looking at dollars and cents is not derived through the church because they've kept up this property very well. However, you know, the demographic of the neighborhood and the conditions of the neighboring properties uh, essentially make this investment, okay, to make it a single family home uh, or whatever permissive use you want to classify it as, uh, just not able to be practical in the scope of things, okay? Um, and Essentially, the hardship related to this, okay, is not unique and does not apply to the substantial uh, part of the neighborhood. If you look at the other properties that are existing in this area, they're all single family, multifamily residents. You have a school that is up the road, okay? So this is the only church that you're going to really see besides St. John's that is further up uh, out of this area, okay? Uh, with that said, I'm going to primarily rest upon my paper submitted. Um, We've also submitted letters of uh, support from uh, Father Dennis Mendy from St. John's, as well as a teacher from CC Ring that this, pro this use of this property is gonna bring new life to this neighborhood. It's gonna be great for kids, okay? This is the type of project that our city should be supporting in times when it is tough, okay? Where you have the ability to help kids, okay? Socialize and get them involved in the arts. And that's the way that 
we all want downtown Jamestown to be is supporting those arts. So at this time, I'll accept any questions from the board. Thank you, Mr. Huber. And we did have questions answered prior in our first meeting uh, by the applicant. Um, so I'd like to see if there are board members who have questions that go beyond the original questions that were asked. And I take it we'll direct them to you, Mr. Huber, and not to the um, not to the petitioner directly. Yes, Mr. Tondo. Okay. Are there questions from members of the board? And please either raise your hand so that we all don't speak at once. Mr. Sorg, you have questions? Go ahead. I, I do. Um, is there anybody here that's representing the church that's advocating for the church this afternoon? Uh, Mr. Sorg, there, there's, there's uh, no one present from the church today. However, I submitted the affirmation for a Sandy Calcian of Century 21 in support of it. Uh, she's been working hand in hand with not just the church, but uh, as well as okay. the uh, president and the trustee that would support this application today. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I do have some questions. And uh, let me begin by saying that I really appreciate all the work, uh, Mr. Uber, that you, you put into this and and, uh, and Melissa and, and, and Sandy, um, the information that you put together, I, I know took a lot of time uh, time to do that, but I do have some questions that I would have had for a, a church representative. And Shane, maybe you can ans answer some of these que questions. And having sold church property before either churches or a parsonage, there's a process uh, that you go through to, se to sell a church property and it requires church council approval. It requires a, a membership vote, um, an appraisal of the property, and then it get a package gets reviewed by the state attorney general's office, uh, and, he, and uh, that has to be be approved. And I guess a question that I that I have is, if has any of this been done up up to this point? Uh, good question, Mr. Sorg, and your uh, description of the process in regards to the Religious Corporations Law of New York is accurate for a real estate transaction. Uh, Tim Eads currently represents the seller uh, attorney out of Fredonia. In my conversations with him, he has the packet of uh, forms to be submitted to the Attorney General's office, as well as the Supreme Court to get the order approving it ready to go. Um, Obviously, you know, as an attorney, you don't want to go file those papers until the main hurdle of the zoning has been satisfied. And you know, obviously, spend clients' money uh, or you know, expend any type of resources on behalf of clients, the state, to go and um, you know get the approval prematurely. So, in uh, in my conversations with Mr. Reed, um, he has the search that's ready to go. He has the uh, all the applications ready to be proceeded to forward to the attorney general's office and subsequently filing the same in accordance with the religious corporations law. Okay, so this is a petition that, that you're, you're advocating for on behalf of the, the purchasers. Uh, in the event, if this board was to grant uh, permission for a use, use variance, but the state attorney general's office denied, denied the, re the request to sell the property, or if the property doesn't appraise out um, for, let's say it appraises greater than $43,000, you get an appraisal on it and it comes in at the assessed value of $64,000. Uh, what happens then? It, it, that's a, a good question. It'll come down, down to the marketability of title. Uh, the parties are in privity of contract right now for that purchase price. In the event that uh, the seller is unable to give marketable title in accordance with the rules of the Jamestown Bar Association, which are you know having the authorization from the Attorney General's office or an order of the Supreme Court, you know the the buyer, whether it's this transaction or another, would have the right to terminate it because they can't uh, give marketable title for it. And what happens to us granting a use variance to this this uh, for this property? I. I agree with you. I think that uh, Victoria's Dance would bring vibrancy to the to the neighborhood. I think it's a good adaptive uh, uh, use for the property. Uh, what I don't think is that I don't believe that this board has the statutory authority to grant such a use. I believe similar to the tattoo studio that in 2020 came to the Zoning Board of Appeals and asked for a use variance. Um, it was denied and they went to city council and by 
local law, they uh, allowed a uh, use of that on Ford Street. I don't know if they've actually gone through and that's, you know, that it's something that's, that's going to happen. But I think that that is, in my opinion, the process uh, that, needs, that needs to be done. As I stated in, in February, I, I strongly feel that the, appro that the uh, proposal is a good adaptive use for the property. But no matter how I try to reframe it or spin it, in the end, it just comes down to um, you know, the fact that I wouldn't be applying the statutory laws that uh, would be granted to this zoning, zoning board in New York State. Uh, so once again, after a thorough review of the facts and listening uh, to the testimony and reading the letters of support that have asked for a rezoning of the property, and I agree with those letters that the property, in my opinion, is improperly zoned based upon the changes in the neighborhood over the last 25 years. But again, I don't believe that this body here, being an appellate body, not a legislative body, has the statutory authority to, to, make, that, to make that change. Um, in order to make that change, as you said, Mr. Huber, you have to meet those four, those four tests. And the four-pronged test uh, that a petitioner must pass um, is set high. The bar is set very high and is purposely uh, set high. And it's supposed to be difficult for the Zoning Board of Appeals to grant a use variance. All four criteria must be met. You miss one, you fail. Uh, why is it such a stringent test? Because in my opinion, failure to manage the community zoning according to the statute has consequences. Spot zoning is illegal and self-defeating. And by granting this petition, in my mind, and I'm only one voice, no louder than anybody else's, else's voice here of the seven, I feel that I would be violating the oath I took and setting a precedent uh, that, it ha that has its own set of you know, negative consequence, consequences. And addressing some of your arguments pertaining to the, to, the hard, to the hardship, I think one of the things that I, you know, we're all, we're all going through a difficult time uh, right now with this pandemic. And I know we're gonna get through it. And I know that we'll grow and, and, learn, and learn from this adversity that we're in. But I feel that we need to guard against, so what we need to guard against is continually changing the goal, changing the goal posts. And uh, I don't wanna sell out on our zoning integrity by uh, reacting carelessly uh, to these, what I feel will be temporary circumstances. A use variance runs with the land. It is not temporary. It is long, it is long term. And if in 10 years, Victoria Dance decides to sell the property and another dance studio was to come in, they may not have, they may not have the same dance type studio that you'd have. Maybe the developer would put a pole in the middle of the building and the students would be adults instead of children two to 20 years, 20 years, 20 years old. So, you don't know what the what the potential uses might be down you know down the road down the road from that and I know we're in a storm some of us like like churches right now um, they're in a hurricane some of us are just feeling a light a light rain but again I I, I feel that uh, it would be careless for us to be misled and allow the pandemic pandemic to be uh, to exploit to be exploited and lead us to make this decisions that I my mind would be bad decisions. To my knowledge, the governor has not in this pandemic directed us to, to spot zone. And that's what we would be doing is we would be, be, we would be, be spot, spot zoning. And I guess in, I guess in addressing some of, some of the things that you commented on regarding the financial, the financial hardship, uh, you're right, this is a special use property. And special use properties typically take longer than three months to sell. Typically, they take between nine and 18, nine and 18 months, to, months to sell. And I have some examples of properties that are special use properties that are nice properties. 117 South Main Street, the Town Barber Building, that was on the market for two years. Of course, it was during a pandemic. 
and it sold for about 85% of its original asking price. The um, salon on Fairmount, on Fairmount Avenue owned by the towns, the uptown, uptown salon, that too was on the market for a couple of years. It's a special use property and it sold for about 90% of its uh, most, most recent asking price. Um, and there are properties that don't sell. Uh, the chiropractor's office on Fairmount Avenue. Uh, that had been on the market for 15 months, started at 145. The most recent uh, price was, one, was 129. And Melissa, you sold a special use property, the uh, Garden of Eden. And that property was on the market approximately nine months. And it sold for $145,000, uh, which was about 82% of the of the uh, ask, asking price. And these are all public, public records. So I guess I would disagree that this special use property doesn't have a market. I think the expectations are, are set too high that it's gonna sell in, in, in 30 days, 60 days or 90 days um, it, because they just don't. They even the nice properties that are well-located and in good condition typically sell in nine to, nine, to 18, nine to 18 months. And you mentioned that, that churches don't, don't sell and they do take a longer time to sell, but they do sell. There's evidence of those churches, like you mentioned the one on Hall Avenue that started out at maybe an unrealistic price. If, uh, if a property is priced right, it typically sells within a reasonable period of time based on its, based on its, based on its use. And then there's a, another church on um, City View Avenue that has recently changed hands in Delaware and East 2nd Street, Emanuel Church and the Healing Ministries on West 3rd Street. So uh, there, there, are, there are churches that, that sell, but they typically sell in a period of time that's greater than 90 days. So I guess I don't feel that there's been enough effort made in using it as a church. Uh, we had our last meeting on February 3rd. On February 5th, when the Post Journal came out with an article regarding that meeting, I had two calls that morning from people that were interested in using it as a church. And I advised them to, to call their broker. I don't know, know where, that, where, that, uh, where that went after, after that. I didn't want to get involved because of my position here as a member of the, the, zoning, the zoning Board of, Board of Appeals. Um, you commented on the property um, being an over-improvement if you developed it into a single, a single family home. And if you put $160,000 into that property, certainly it would be an over-improvement. But based on my experience, you're not going to have somebody that's going to buy that property and hire a contractor to go in and remodel it into a single family home. It's going to be an investor who's got the skills to put sweat equity in it and develop it into a single, fam single family home with modest upgrades that meet minimum property standards. And they would probably rent it for seven or $800 hundred a month, depending upon the number of bedrooms uh, uh, that you'd put in, that would be put in, uh, put in the property. So I guess in, I guess the way that I, I guess I would agree on only one of your arguments that it's not going to change the character of the neighbor neighborhood. I don't believe it would in a negative way. I think it would in a positive way. But once again, I'll go back and say that based on my, in my opinion, I don't think that you've satisfied the four prong test in meeting all, all four. I think you've just satisfied in my mind, just one of, uh, one of the four. And therefore I will be, be, um, be voting against it. But I would encourage, uh, strongly encourage you to um, take your proposal uh, to the city council. Um, recently, as I mentioned, they um, changed the use on a property on West 4th Street to allow a tattoo, tattoo studio. And maybe as you could tell, I, I guess I would like to see the Grace Chapel remain uh, a place of worship. If there was any way to bridge the use neighborhood use as a place with this Grace Chapel as a place of worship and combine that with the art of, of dancing. In my mind, that would be a win-win. Churches are places of worship. 
but they also offered daycare, thrift shops, counseling services. And when I was a boy, um, the local ch neighborhood church was used uh, where my Boy Scout met weekly, uh, you know, at that neighborhood church. So just maybe, uh, maybe that there's an opportunity here that, uh, that we didn't, that we haven't, that we haven't seen. Thank you very much, very much, Mrs. Dutano, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sork, for your detailed response and going through each of those four um, of the ten tenants that we do have to look at. Um, I would allow Mr. Huber, on behalf of his client, if he wanted to uh, reference any of those comments and if you wanted to make any further comments about the proposal. I would, Mr. Tonto. Thank you. Um, you know, I respectfully disagree with Mr. Sork's uh, representations to this board today. Uh, on multiple grounds is that first, you know, the Zoning Board of Appeals is authorized by statute to make the use, grant the use variance. Although the, the letters uh, that we have submitted to the board uh, are you know, in support of it, they mischaracterize what our application is. We can't fault uh, the individuals of our community that are here to support this great opportunity. Um, in regards to the elements where I, I respectfully disagree is, is that it's not just what the statute provides, it's also what the case law provides. And the case law is very clear when it comes to the return on investment, whereas dollars and cents. It is not just that you can't do anything that's gonna make you money with the property, okay? We've submitted to the board here, the actual dollars and cents of the values of the neighborhood, what it would cost to make it a conforming use in actual dollars and cents, okay? Whether you think that there's a better use or you know a different option is really a moot point, okay? Because not everybody can go do the work themselves, okay? You have Ms. Ferraro and Ms. Haskell that have been in business as a dance studio for decades, okay? Um, they're gonna be a great addition to this neighborhood, okay? And so uh, also if you're trying to compare this, uh, this application with others that you've referenced, whether it's the chiropractor or the Garden of Eden, that is a totally different zoning um, uh, district over there in the town of Ellicott. And I'm familiar with it because I own property on that street. Those, there's a much broader range that those are permitted uses on it. That is professional office, okay? Uh, in accordance with the town of Ellicott, which has a specific obligation, whether it's, you know, um, you know uh, the chiropractic studio or with the Garden of Eden, that is, uh, essentially his grandfather did. So I think that it is a mischaracterization to compare this uh, application with those, okay? And including the, the tattoo parlor, whether it's a tattoo parlor or, you know, uh, artisan shop, you know, we can't make, you know, draw comparisons to this because I don't know what they submitted for their proof to satisfy the elements, okay? Mr. Uber, um, I just want to interrupt you. That wasn't really a change. I mean, that was a complete change in mm -hmm. the allowance of that area, which it was at that time commercial, but did not mm -hmm. allow tattoo parlors. And the, and the taking to the city council was a change in the zoning code itself, not, not to <laughs> allow just one type of a variance or another. Um, so that really isn't a comparison. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to clarify okay. that. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Tonto, for the record. And uh, based upon Mr. Sorg's uh, arguments to the board is, this property hasn't been on the uh, market long enough. Why would we want something to sit there that is priced right, that is essentially going to deplete the assets of a church that has no money to come in? That is not in the best interest of the religious organization to let it sit there. You have a good buyer with a cash offer that is able to actually make this an investment in not just the neighborhood, but our community. But in order to satisfy that problem, we got to let it, we got to let it sit there long enough so that the seller who is, uh, as I've stated in my papers, they're volunteering their time to maintain it. Coming up from Pennsylvania, the affirmation of Sandy Calasita goes through what their costs are monthly with no income. So I, I just think that is a, a mischaracterization of uh, the transaction here. And uh, it's, my, it's our position that uh, we have satisfied all elements for a use variance to be approved of by this board today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uber. Are there other questions from members of the board? I would just like to make a couple of comments. Sure, Mr. Uh, Kenyon. As far as the zoning, that would probably be the best route. However, I think doing an isolated uh, exception 
the risk goes to the buyer because if they want to change the use down the road, it, they'd have to come back for a variance. I mean, it's only going to be for the dance studio. If you look at the neighborhood, there's uh, three churches within a stone's throw. You have a BPU uh, facility there. Uh, you have a 7-Eleven, which is on the corner of uh, uh, Buffalo and uh, Second Street. So, I mean, I don't have a problem. Actually, I think the use of a dance studio with the school is probably the most beneficial item uh, that could be put in there. And uh, I just, like I say, I, I think there's some risk that goes to the buyer because it's only a use variance. And if they went to sell it later, it'd be something different. So. Thank you, Mr. Kenyon. And I think that deserves a clarification from either Mr. Haskin or Mr. Um, Mr. Scalise that we could in fact provide a use variance with limitations as you had first asked for um, to this particular type of dance studio, which might in fact um, avoid what Mr. Sorg had said is if somebody wanted to make it into some kind of a um, pole dancing um, dance studio in the future. Is that right? Can either Mr. Haskin or Mr. Scalise uh, talk, talk to that? Yes, you can put conditions on there, but they can't be saying it has to only be Victoria's dance studio, but you can say that it only be certain days of the week, ages, uh, I suppose you could say certain types of dances. As far as the pole in there, that's dangerously close to adult entertainment, which is not permitted. Uh, so, but then you can put some things out. You can't say specifically to the purchaser, but you can say to the general use. And it would only be for dance studios. And I think the size itself would limit it to smaller groups, smaller children. Is for adults, if you've ever seen modern dance, they take up whole stages. And the practice there, they wouldn't even be able to get started before they hit the wall. Thank you, Mr. Scalise. Mr. Haskin, is there anything that you wanted to add to that? I think uh, Mr. Scalise pretty much nailed all the relevant points. So I, I don't have anything else to add, Chairwoman. Thank you. Um, any other questions from members of the board? I, I would just say that I uh, agree with the brief set forth by Mr. Uber. Uh, and I uh, think that, uh, you know, all four criteria are met for us to uh, approve this. I disagree with the notion that we would be a spot zoning uh, because uh, I think that uh, as laid out in the brief, uh, this complies with uh, the case law and the, 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 the zoning uh, statute in the city of Jamestown. So I'll certainly be voting in favor. Thank you, Mr. Panabianco. Um, if, uh, yes, Mr. Smeal, you have questions? Yes, um, I just wanted to, to weigh in and explain a little bit about uh, how I'll be voting if we reach that point on this evening's meeting. We're faced with a lot of challenges here. And though I am but a babe in the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals woods, uh, I've, uh, I've learned a lot in this case. And I definitely uh, owe a debt of gratitude to Mr. Sorg and his, his explanations and examination of the facts and circumstances uh, presented. Uh, one of the challenges that we're, we're definitely facing is uh, a zoning code that, uh, that is challenging. Um, some characterize it as being out of date. Uh, some folks think it works just fine. I, uh, I, I think that, that is, that's one of the challenges. And, and as this body moves forward, I hope that we look at, at ways to, to uh, stimulate uh, different and more robust growth in the city. Uh, with respect to this, per this property in particular, uh, one of the challenges we also are facing is a decimation of mainline denomination uh, congregations in terms of numbers. Uh, so I, I've got significant concerns about, uh, about another uh, house of worship operating on this property as there seems to be a, a growing number of properties of this type. And, uh, and the other challenge that I have is, is becomes one of semantics. Uh, as long as we're entertaining 
hypothetical scenario is I had it posited to myself after the last meeting that if uh, if the dance studio had would just maybe rename as uh, as you know a, a liturgical dance celebration studio, they would be compliant with the existing zoning. But they didn't do that, and uh, and, and I'm satisfied with the application as uh, as submitted. Um, I think that we're at a point where the spirit of these statutes is being honored, um, perhaps not the letter, uh, but I'm, I'm comfortable with honoring the spirit. Thank you, Mr. Samil. I appreciate your comments. And, and I do think over time, members of this board, uh, some who have left it and, and some who have joined recently do understand that our zoning code has been outdated for a number of years. Um, the tattoo parlor incident was one that required some changes to the zoning code and an overall uh, zoning code review is certainly in order. I have asked the mayor to make that a priority in his administration because we do tend to have to look at these incidents as individual spot zoning, as Mr. Sorg has said, because the zoning code has not been updated uh, in a number of years as we look at changes in commercial enterprises and small business and also what individuals like to do uh, in terms of cottage industries out of their home based on the fact the internet has allowed different types of businesses to be done out of homes. So that's just a side comment. Um, I do have a couple of questions that I don't think anyone else has asked and, and Mr. Ubra again on behalf of the petitioner. My concern is about parking and dropping off students for this um, particular use. Um, I think in our zoning code now, it says that dance studios need one parking space for every 100 square feet of floor space that they have. Um, I've looked at this property, I've driven around. I, I just don't know how they're going to park and, and I would just like some uh, information on how that's going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Tonto. In my conversations with my client, I believe a lot of it is gonna be, you know, especially foot traffic, you know, uh, after school, uh, small periods of drop off. Um, I mean, if uh, Ms. Farrow or Ms. Haskell, you know, could address, you know, that based upon, you know, the average amount of uh, children and participants they have. I know that right now, based upon, you know, the requirements to comply with all the COVID-19 restrictions, that is a very small class, okay? So if Ms. Uh, Farrow and Haskell want to address that, uh, what they anticipate. If they would just state their name and address again for the record. Um, Jacqueline Ferraro, uh, 432 South Avenue, Victoria Haskell, 306 Howard Avenue. Um, so with this um, facility, we would only be having uh, one dance room going on at a time and due to COVID-19. Um, so there's about, we, we probably have about six to 10 students in the classroom and we don't allow, as I, I did state in the, my business plan, we don't allow for the waiting um, area to be open. So people would, they don't need to park. Sure. They usually classes, um, students take an hour to an hour and a half of, of like a block scheduled class. So a lot of the time parents will just drop off their kids. Um, they'll walk on the sidewalk. Um, walk right up to class and then the parents will go run errands and then come back and pick up their child. We also give um, like a 10 to 15 minute window for other, the other class to come in. That way there isn't a lot of traffic going on at once. Cause again, we don't want our waiting area super busy either because of, of the virus. So that's actually, I think helped us and it keeps things more organized. Oh, we can, yes. so. And we'll okay. just keep traffic area low. And the school, um, like I said, the school's right there. So we have a, a lot of students um, from CC Ring and even WASH that um, walk over. And even right now, being across, well, right, right now, our facility is across the school from Purcell, and that helps um, yes. us out a lot. And I think for the pandemic period, I understand that. And Haywood Street is just a very small side street. And that would be the street, I take it, that you would have students parents dropping them off on that side street rather than the busy Buffalo street. Oh, yes. The Sorry. Front yes. Entrance of the building. Yes, so. absolutely. It, it would be on um, the side street, not the, not the busy street, not Buffalo. Okay. Thank you. And again, for Mr. Scalise, just a clarification that 
if this is used as a dance studio and it requires one parking space for each 100 square feet of space, we don't have that included in this variance request. I didn't include that because the parking requirement for a church exceeds what would be for the dance studio. So I didn't feel it was a pre-existing condition that was meeting the parking requirements. And I also talked with Ms. Farrar uh, about how things would work. Uh, and also just personal experience. I've been by there and I've seen them unload at CC Ring and they're parked all the way down Haywood, both sides. And it seems to work. Everybody understands how things work down there when they drop their children off. I'm sure the dance parents will learn that real quickly. And uh, I don't really foresee it as an issue. And it, even uh, going back to if we look at non-COVID numbers, I think it's more relevant. You know, how many are they gonna have in a class for the space size is more what we need to look at than what we're doing at the moment. Okay, I just want the record to show that it was considered a pre-existing condition so that any other variance request was not required and, and uh, indicated by the Department of Development when this variance request was made. And um, sorry, also there, um, we won't conflict. I know I've said this a couple of times with the school. Like I understand that traffic can be a little um, uh, heavy right after school, like around 310, but we don't start our classes until 4, 430. So it gives the kids time yeah. to walk down and to get ready for class with us. Thank you. Uh, and my other questions were related to the um, comparisons of church properties, both in the city and outside of the city. Some of them were from Ole and some of them were from the town of Ellicott. Some of them were elsewhere. Um, there's a property, a uh, church on Hall Avenue, not the former Jewish temple that has been on the market. No one mentioned that. That's also vacant um, and, and it's not been sold as far as I could tell from recent real estate um, indications. Um, and I was somewhat alarmed by the fact that the property, the former Jewish temple did sell for $20,000 after being on the market for a very large amount higher than that. Um, we also have outside of the city, um, the Jehovah's Witness uh, property on Baker Street Extension that has been put on the market and again, has not been sold recently. Uh, and that is a very uh, recently built um, property and, and it would again conform to a number of uses outside of the city. But these are also comparisons that I think were not made uh, when we were looking at both what uh, Ms. Calasina had uh, indicated and also what Mr. Soar had indicated in his remarks. Um, are there any other clarifying questions or comments from members of the board? Seeing none, it's time that we allow members of the public, if there are any, to make comments. Is there anyone, Jennifer, that, that has come in from members of the public that we need to allow? I, I don't have anyone in the waiting room. Nobody requested access to the meeting. I have three um, items that have been received by my office with regard to the petition, and I can read those. Okay, yes. We need to read into the record the correspondence that's been received for this. Um, the first letter I have is, date, is dated January 11th. Uh, it comes from Jennifer Goshgarian, 421 East Virginia Circle, Jamestown, New York, 14701. Dear City of Jamestown Zoning Board members, it has recently come to my attention that Mrs. Jacqueline Ferraro and Mrs. Victoria Haskell are interested in utilizing the property at 379 Buffalo Street as a new location for their dance studio, Dancing with Victoria. It is currently vacant, but is not zoned for commercial use. In my opinion, a dance studio would be a fantastic use for this space. Bringing this dance studio, which is already a well-established business to 379 Buffalo Street would be great for the neighborhood and for Jamestown. I'm currently a kindergarten teacher at CC Ring Elementary School, which is next door to the aforementioned property. I've been teaching at the school for 13 years. During my time at Ring, I have seen many houses around the school become abandoned or condemned. It would be wonderful to see this vacant church used as an inviting and safe place for children. Also by changing the zoning of this building, it allows Mrs. Ferraro and Mrs. Haskell to keep the business in the city of Jamestown, which is good for the city. As a lifelong Jamestown resident, I love to see businesses stay in the city and our neighborhoods improve. My children, Bella, eight years old, and Sophia, four years old, are both students at Ring 
at Ring School and attend dancing at Dancing with Victoria. I look forward to having the opportunity to walk my children to dance after school. The dance schedule doesn't conflict with the school schedule and having the two buildings in close proximity offers ample opportunities for our neighborhood children. Many children living around Ring School depend on walking to get from point A to point B. Moving the dance studio to 379 Buffalo Street opens up dance to a whole new group of children in Jamestown, children who otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to attend dance classes. Dance has proven to be a safe outlet for my children during these uncertain times. They are passionate about dance and look forward to it as their outlet. Please consider allowing 379 Buffalo Street to be used as a dance studio. You will be giving the gift of dance to more children, as well as improving the neighborhood around CC Ring Elementary School. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Jennifer Gashgarian. Um, our second item of correspondence comes from Reverend Dennis Mendy. Uh, City of Jamestown Zoning Board. Dear board members, I am writing to you at the request of Jacqueline Ferraro, DBA Dancing with Victoria, who is proposing to purchase the property at 379 Buffalo Street for the purpose of relocating the dance studio to that location. As the pastor of Holy Apostles Parish, which, which includes St. John Church, whose property is located on Newton Avenue at the intersection with Buffalo Street, and thus in close proximity to the property for the proposed dance studio, I wish to inform you that I and the congregation of the parish would be in support of having the property at 379 Buffalo Street rezoned to allow for the studio to be located there. Not only would, locating, would the locating of the studio there provide an opportunity for children to have access to learn the art of dance, but also help improve the neighborhood in which CC Ring Elementary School and St. John Church are located. The family of Holy Apostles Parish at St. John Church is pleased to support Jacqueline in this endeavor. If I can be of further service to you, please do not hesitate to contact me. Sincerely yours, Reverend Dennis W. Mendy, pastor. And that one, I'm sorry, the, the date on that one was January 15th. Um, the last letter is date, dated February 1st from Daniel and Patricia Lynn Forrest, 27 Hotchkiss Street, Jamestown, New York, 14701. Dear members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, we are the owners of the single family residence located at 383 Buffalo Street, Jamestown, directly next door to the subject property. We object to the proposed use variance for the following reasons. One, the zoning in this area is residential R1. There are no other commercial businesses near the subject property and this would substantially modify the intended use of buildings in this area. Two, the occupancy for the subject property exceeds 80 people. There is only six to eight parking spaces for employees and customers, which does not meet commercial building parking requirements. Overflow parking during dance sessions and or recitals would be unreasonably disruptive to, neighborhoods, to neighbors quiet enjoyment. Three, there is not suitable accommodations for handicap accessibility as required in com commercial buildings open to the public. Four, the stopping of cars to drop off and or pick up students in front of the building on Buffalo Street would cause a hazard for both vehicles and pedestrians. Five, the building is not equipped with proper fire sprinkler system and pole stations as required by the NFPA fire code to operate a dance studio, a dance school for young kids. Six, we lease our property at 383 Buffalo Street as a private home dwelling. The noise and activity would impact the lease, uh, leaseability of the dwelling. Seven, the commercial use of the building is next door to our residential dwelling and would substantially di and diminish its value and saleability. We respectfully request that the application be disapproved it is, as it is not suitable for a dance school for numerous reasons above. Best regards, Daniel and Patricia Lindfors. And that was it. Oh, Ellen, you're on mute still. Hi, um, I I, uh, I am um, I'm the principal planner in the uh, Department of Development, and um, I just am here to represent an endorsement for this uh, variance. I think it would be a good uh, addition to the neighborhood. Um, I think there's a lot of parallels to draw between um, the nurturing environment of our faith-based institutions and the nurturing environments of um, arts-based instruction as well. And dance in particular um, has a unique way of really addressing those things. And so from the individual level in terms of the student um, themselves as um, inclusive of the operation of it that um, Jacqueline and Victoria will provide. And then also its uh, impact on the neighborhood it ripples out as a really positive um, addition to the neighborhood. 
thank you very much. Um, I did see in the packet that the zoning board received that there had been review by the development department. I take it also by the planning office. Um, and Ellen, that you had been part of that process and that yes. you endorsed it. Yes. Uh, I did find though in my packet an additional a bit of correspondence which wasn't read in and that was from Joe Liuzzo dated February 9th, 2021. Do you have that, Jennifer? Maybe that came in the first packet. I didn't know if it was withdrawn or if it was still considered part of the record. I, I did not, I never had anything from a Mr. Okay. Liuzzo. Um, I guess I'm Mr. going to- Mr. Tonto, that's yeah. actually included in my packet. Okay. Uh, submitted to the board as exhibit A. Okay, fine. So that it is in, in the record. I just wanted to make sure I was trying to get all my papers in order. Um, I did have a question on the handicapped accessibility. I know that did come in as part of a question from uh, a close property owner and it was also in my original notes and I didn't ask it. Is it handicapped accessible now as a church? No. Who's answering? Is that Mr. Yu Uber? Larry. Okay. Um, and I guess then I'll ask the petitioners because this is going to be used for a commercial use, how are you going to handle any handicap accessibility? I think the ADA is gonna require you if you make any changes to make it handicapped accessible. Mr. Well, it, it will to a point and if they don't do anything structural to the building, just some paint and wallpaper, isn't going to trigger the need for it. It is, you know, it's not ideal, but it's a pre-existing non-conforming use. And the term is technically infeasible because in order to do it, may exceed the numbers they had to remodel it to begin with. Uh, I mean, I can work with them. Uh, there's a possibility they could cut a doorway in for the basement floor, which would solve handicap accessibility for half the building and it would be easier for them I mean but that's a discussion I can have with them as we get closer to them opening up if they're granted the variance. Okay. Again I just want the record to indicate that the development department has indicated that's a pre-existing condition uh, for the property um, yeah. that, so if that, if that would be uh, in the record thank you. Um, and at this point, is there anyone else that would like to make comments, ask questions of the petitioners, or follow up on anything that has been said? I'm just looking across my Zoom number, my Zoom people here, so I don't see anybody raising their hand um, to ask any further questions. And if that's the case, at this point, we'll close for public comment. Um, and it, we would be looking for a member of the board of, of the board of the zoning board um, to make a motion um, on the use variance request for the property at 379 Buffalo Street. Um, and as we discussed during this time, there can be restrictions on the motion. If the motion is made to approve the use variance, you can make restrictions. Um, if it is to disapprove it, you don't need to add any restrictions. We have to have a motion and a second before we can discuss. Mr. Smeal? Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we approve the requested use variance. Are you going to put any restrictions in terms that it can only be used for this type of a dance studio? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Is there a second to the motion for just an approval of the use variance for this? Mr. Panabianco? Yep, I'll second it. Thank you. Questions on the motion? So you're saying if they want to make it a pole dancing place later, they have that option? If no, I think that that would be done. considered an adult. Uh, as Mr. Scalise pointed out, that wouldn't, be, that wouldn't be allowed, correct? I would have to look at what they're proposing, but there is a definite possibility that that could be considered adult entertainment would be uh, disallowed. Okay. I'll just jump in with a, a slight clarification of that is that um, uh, pole dancing uh, classes have also been uh, welcomed into the fitness arena as well. So in terms of the idea of pole dancing, it depends on really the context and the circumstances of that as pole dancing has also become a fitness trend as well. 
But adult entertainment would be available, uh, correct? Correct. <laughs> so the motion on the floor is to approve the use variance as requested uh, with no limitations that for this dance studio and this property at 379 Buffalo Street. Seeing no other questions, uh, clerk, if you could please call the roll. Ms. Kame? Yeah. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kenyon? Yes. Mr. Panabianco? Yes. Mr. Smeal? Yes. And Mr. Sorg? No. Chairwoman Dutanto? No. This does pass. Um, we had one, two, three, four, five eyes, two no's. It takes four affirmative votes. Um, and that is the only petition request we had today. So I would urge the petitioners now to work with Mr. Scalise um, to make sure that everything is in order um, and to make sure that before, again, anything can be done on this variance request, it has to go through the church's proper protocol as Mr. Uber had indicated as well. And seeing no other business, um, we will close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. You appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.